Next matter on the calendar is number 89, matter of Bowers Development versus Oneida County Industrial Development Association. Good afternoon, Paul Goldman for the respondent OSIDA. If it pleases the court, I'd like to reserve three minutes for my rebuttal. Sir. Um, the issue for today is do IDAs have the power to use eminent domain to acquire property for a parking lot? IDAs receive the unqualified grant of eminent domain through the words necessary for its corporate purposes. It's not limited to a specific project. It's necessary for its corporate purposes is the test. In this case, on this record, the OSIDA satisfied six different corporate purposes under 858 and 852. Counselor, what's our standard of review here? Rational basis. Let me tell you, that's found directly in 207B with the language same manner and form and with the same effect as provided for appeals in a special proceeding. That word special proceeding is not an idle directive. It's a direct reference to CPLR 7804A. And that is, if you read the concurrence uh, from Justice Reed and Goldstein, it's rational basis. But aren't we looking at what the meaning of commercial is and whether or not that excludes health care and health-related facilities? That, that strikes me as a question of statutory interpretation to which we would not necessarily accord rational review, even though we otherwise would in deciding, for example, if a particular facility um, was commercial or not. On the commercial issue, it's, it's ambiguous. It's, it's, it could have multiple meanings. So I believe that deference is required under the O'Brien versus Spitzer case cited. There's a series of cases and lines of, of cases in that regard. In terms of the commercial didn't the, aspect, but didn't the Attorney General's opinions make clear that commercial doesn't include health care facilities, hospitals? And wouldn't the legislature have understood that that has been the interpretation the AG has taken? I would say, first of all, Your Honor, we don't have a health-related facility. Health-related facility is the term in the 1980 AG opinion. That's a specific reference to an HRF. They changed, the majority failed to pick up on the nuance and I thought material. the second opinion says hospital. Did I miss something? I thought at least one of them refers to hospital. There's one is a, related to nursing homes and HRFs, and the other one is the hospital. We don't have either. We have a parking lot, okay? We have a parking lot, a McCadden parking lot. So that's what I want to ask. Is that what the case turns on? Because that struck me as the, the fault line between the majority and the dissent. Absolutely. The majority thinks we're talking about the hospital and this entire health uh, facilities campus, and the dissent thinks we're only talking about the parking lot. Do you Under agree the with EDL that? definitions for what you notice, you were limited. But, but to do you agree that that appears to be the main difference between I the majority and the dissent? I think it's the, the critical dissent. distinction. But the okay. issue is we don't have either. Okay. okay. We don't have an HRF. We have no residence. We have no lodging. We have no health care services. An HRF is where we put our parents when they need care. More importantly, what we're talking about is a licensed facility. Nursing home has a licensed operator. Hospitals have a licensed operator. And HRFs have a licensed operator. A medical office building, if we're talking about it being a pertinent to a medical office building, there is no license. You get a certificate of occupancy for building does, the building why does, correctly. Why, why does license bear on commercial? Because on the issue, OK, I, I believe that I'm trying to draw the distinction of why it's not an HRF, OK? And that's yeah, the, but the HRF is in the statute. Commercial is in the statute. Let me tell you why I think we're right on commercial, which is your, your point, Your Honor. The plain, I, I've given you two cases I want to give, the PSC case. A parking facility for an eminent domain by in PSC. The city of Albany IDA condemned a parking facility, so we can certainly utilize our power of condemnation to create a parking facility. Can I, can I just ask you a couple questions about the record, and then I'll let you continue. Is it clear from the record that the parking facility is one for which you would have to pay to park there? Yes. They basically said that it would be available to the public in the evenings, and it's available for the medical office building. So it's either a straight parking facility, or it's an appurtenance to the medical office building. It's one of those two choices. It's not related to the hospital, because it's controlled by the medical office. When you say available in the evening, what do you mean by that? I'm sorry? When you said it's, it would be available to the public in the evening, do you mean it would be free in the evenings? It would be available to the public in the evenings. There's no gate shown at 55 
eleven twelve. So it would be available for people to use in the to, to park free at. Correct. So if I lived in Utica and it was daytime, not the evening, and I wanted to park there and go to a nearby McDonald's and pay. Could I do that? Is that clear in the record? I, I don't think it's clear in the record, but they, I believe uh, it's right next to the building, so they're going to have someone policing it and probably giving out tickets. So it's, it's exclusive for the use of use of the MOB, but it's a parking facility at its core. I, so, I, I, thought, uh, go ahead. I thought there was in the record a representation that there would be a fee and that it would be used to offset the bonds. No. Okay, it says available. There's a, a, a page, I've got the record reference here, but it says it's available for the evenings to the public. And that oh, no, would that, be oh, yes, it could be just for the public, but they got to pay. No, that at, at night, but it, in, in, during the day, it's, it's exclusive to the MOB. So but, doesn't, then, doesn't it then become part of the medical facility? Do we have to treat it distinctly? If, if people can't use it on their own for other purposes to attend to other business, then doesn't it become just part it's of the entire parking lot. Inter That's but it's not really a public parking lot if I can't pay and go there unless I'm going to a medical office. There. But again, remember we have a um, MOB where people need to access the facility. They would have priority, but during the evenings after business hours, it's available because there's a parking shortage in that community. But the point of this is that parking facilities are clearly commercial. And there's a case that was just issued a week and a half ago, 61 Crown Street, LLC, versus the Ulster County IDA, two, uh, 2023 WL 720-01066. So, Council, I'm sorry, can you just explain to me one more time why this isn't the situation that Judge Halligan posited before, which is whether we agree with the agency's interpretation of what a commercial facility is and whether we owe you some deference under O'Brien in that regard or we don't. I think you owe us deference because it's ambiguous. I assume I agree with that proposition, but you seem to push back a little bit when she suggested that this is really just a question of whether we agree with the agency's interpretation of what a commercial enterprise is or whatever the it's term. It's an ambiguous term. I've given you, you know, I've given you multiple reasons as to why it is commercial, either as a parking lot or as an MOB, as an appurtenance to the MOB. Yeah, and if we agree, if we say this is not a hospital and this is not a medical-related facility, um, therefore, you know. It's rational. Yeah. It becomes rational. Is, is that just the end of the analysis? I believe so, because they have an elevated burden under the standards set forth in Cowell and Goldstein and all the EDPL Article II cases of showing that it's irrational. So once I've established any of those corporate purposes under 858 or 852, I've met my rational burden and he can't meet his because it, it, there's no way to show it's irrational if it's within the corporate purposes. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I, okay. Uh, is it your reading that something that is a uh, health care facility or hospital cannot be commercial? Are those mutually exclusive categories under the statute? I think a health care facility... Okay, which is not defined in, you know, 700.2. A healthcare facility is a medical office building. It's de facto a commercial facility. It's rent paying. I've given you, you know, Your Honor asked the question. We're looking for common but, meanings. But the statute does enumerate some kinds of facilities, and it doesn't include hospitals or healthcare facilities. But it doesn't have a definition for commercial. So uh, therefore, no, but, but it, does, it does enumerate some types does. of facilities. And, and you know, there's, there's a way in which one could read a statute that has a list like that to say anything not included in the list. We assume the legislature didn't mean, meant to exclude. But commercial is a very broad term. So let me, HRF let me, is the term in the AG opinion. It's let me not ask, let me ask medical office the term commercial for a moment, because this is something that struck me as odd about the statute. Commercial is a very broad term. And I would think the commercial would be big enough to include, for example, manufacturing or research or renewable energy or um, railroad or horse racing or automobile racing. So the legislature went to the trouble of defining, specifically enumerating a bunch of things that I would ordinarily think of as commercial, which maybe is a, a, an instruction that we ought to read commercial narrowly so as not to include those things. I, I don't think that's the, 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 what the legislature intended, because if you look at uh, necessary for its corporate purposes and you look at, you know, Bath 
Wexler and Waldos, the intersection of that. And you read Bath, Bath says that if we have you know, a use that is um, within our corporate purposes, it satisfies the jurisdiction authority test. If you read Wexler, defining the word necessary under the words necessary for its corporate purposes, and we fit directly under Bath, so our language is exactly the same. So I believe that language says, if we deem it to be necessary for our corporate purposes, then it's appropriate, because we're not limited. Remember, under Wexler, it says the word necessary is to achieve legislatively authorized goals. And it says, right in it, the agency has wide latitude to determine what acquisitions are necessary to achieve legislatively authorized goals. So it's not limited to a specific project. It's limited to achievement of the goals. An IDA can take property with a project or without a project, if it's needed for the community, if it's deemed within their discretion. Because these agencies were formed by the legislature. They were enactments of the legislature to help economic development in 852, to prevent economic deterioration. The blight findings on this record in this area are undisputed. If you emasculate that power, then what's the purpose of having an IDA and having commercial? And what's the purpose of the specific categories in the statute? If, if your authority is that broad. I believe that with it, there, it, there are defined terms for certain uh -huh. categories, but they're not for warehousing and for commercial. So you're, you have to, you can't excise the statute out and emasculate it. You have to give it its common meaning. And that's how it has. So let me ask you this. If we disagree with your framing, that you say this is a parking lot, that's all that you've decided, right? That that's, that's the point of the eminent, do exercise the eminent domain power for this parking lot. Because I don't think there's ambiguity that a parking lot is commercial. I think the question is whether or not you view this as the majority in the dissent disagreed, as either about the parking lot or about this health services campus and its use and need for a parking lot, which I thought had always been represented as integral to that campus. That fails. That fails under the definitions in the EDPL. Okay. They're limited to the use of the property. That's why you give a notice to the record property owner and not to the adjoiner. You have to, it, it, it fails right on that nub. You're, so I'm saying it's either a parking lot, and that's the use for the property. The only point of the parking lot, as you yourself have said, is to serve something else. You can look at it by itself or as an appurtenance, but it's a parking lot or it's a parking lot that's an appurtenant to a medical office building. So under those four cases that I've cited, Ellis, Krauss, St. Francis, and Vassar Brothers. This, uh, the three appellate divisions have said that that use of a parking lot that's an appurtenant to a medical office building, that is a de facto commercial use and is not reasonably incident to the hospital use. On those four cases, this has to be a commercial use. There is not a basis, there is not a basis for the conversion that for purposes of Article 18A, did you have the hospital, exact use you have, your excuse Honor. me, can you have the hospital without, without that parking lot? Yes, there's plenty of sufficient parking, but it's needed. So if we disagree with you, if we disagree with you, that project can move forward, correct? The project is under construction, but it needs to have a pertinent parking. But the point of this is. You want more has, parking. You got to have parking, right? next to the facility. But my point is, and I'm sorry, I get excited about these, these things, <laughs> I and I apologize. See that. Okay. The issue is that those four cases that say that parking a pertinent to a medical office building, I'm ready to climb over this desk. <laughs> we do have a lot of criminal yeah, cases yeah. that involve people who get very excited about parking, so let's not go there. Okay, I, I, I'm not going to do that. So the point of this is that those four cases unanimously hold that it's that exact identical use, which is what we have here, is not a pertinent to a hospital use. It can't be. It can't follow that that use magically or mystically becomes, for purposes of Article 18A, you know, a hospital use. The real property tax law and the 
Article 18A are were enacted together. They have to be construed together because what we're doing in an IDA transaction is we're giving but if, out but if, tax benefits. But if the hospital is what serves the public, that's the benefit you're talking about. That's an answer I, benefit of it. And, yes. the, and the parking lot has, for some reason, all of a sudden had nothing to do with it. Why, why are you taking it, property from someone else? This property was gone anyways. He sold it. So it's not a question of we're taking someone out of their business. I, I didn't say you were taking someone out of their business. So th throughout the record, this property was shown as a parking lot. That's undisputed. So the point of this is that this hospital parking lot that's a pertinent to an MOB is not a hospital use. So therefore, under the real property tax law, four cases from the appellate division, it can't be that it's now automatically converts to a hospital use. Thank you, counsel. We have your argument. Thank you. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Good afternoon, your honors. Michael Fogel um, for respondents, if it may please the court. I think what's going on here is that the IDA is trying to recast the whole purpose of the eminent domain proceeding as uh, really a litigation tactic to avoid the limits on its authority. Um, if you look at the record, their record that was developed before the IDA, and you look at the purpose behind why the parking lot um, why the property was being taken by eminent domain, you got to look first at his client or the Cubs um, application to the IDA where it said that this property, we need this property, it's critical for our project. Um, the public notice, which Mr. Goldman mentioned, in fact says that the property is being taken to be, and I quote, additional project land in connection with the Cub project. It wasn't just referenced as a parking lot. It was listed as additional park, additional project land for the Cub project. Is a parking lot commercial? No, it's it's not, Your Honor, because you can't just look at the parking lot. It's part of the overall Cub project. So, is your view that a healthcare facility cannot be commercial under the terms of the statute? Yes, because. And what, why is that? Can you help us understand why you read the statute? that way, given how broad commercial, uh, how broad a term that is generally understood to be? Well, I, I think first of all, they're not entitled to any deference because since this is a statute that's conferring eminent domain authority, it needs to be strictly... Why conferred. would we read it the way you propose regardless of the deference question? Well, I think because if you look at eight, General Municipal 858, which yeah. grants uh, the powers of the IDA over certain projects, it's specifically, and this is something that they totally ignored in, in their briefings, and I think it's something that Your Honor has pointed out, is that there's, there's been, if, if commercial was been meant to be this all-encompassing broad term, then the legislature would not have found it necessary to add very specific additional projects. What I find hard about this is that the list of these specific facilities are highly specific, right? Industrial pollution control, education or cultural, that's a little broader. Railroad, horse racing, automobile racing, continuing care. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that, that, that to read that as limiting the definition of these very broad terms, not just commercial, but industrial manufacturing, et cetera, it do doesn't make a lot of sense given how very narrow they are. Is there anything in the legislative history you can point us to about why those terms are in there? Well, I think uh, as part of the legislative history, if you look at the AG's, AG opinions, it talks about that the only possible category that hospital or healthcare facility could fall into would be commercial, and there's nothing in the legislative history suggesting that commercial is intended to but be that is there, broad. Is there any explanation you can give us as to why the legislature selected these couple of highly specific, like automobile racing, right? Um, you know, uh, types of facilities that it felt the need to call out. That's what I'm trying to understand. Right, and I, and I think it's because there was a question as to whether or not those fell within the definition of commercial. Council, that was my understanding, what you just said. And, I, and for that reason, I sort of viewed the list as expanding mm -hmm. what a commercial facility was. We have the 
the commercial facility is that term, as that term is generally understood and used. And then we have these specific examples of things that people might be doubtful as to whether or not they qualify as commercial activities. And this is confirmatory of the fact that they are. So am I wrong to read th that particular section as actually creating an expansion of what a commercial facility is? I think, it, I think it, it's the opposite, Your Honor. Because Why? I think because I think by, by creating these additional uses or projects that the IDA has authority for, which you know, could conceivably fall within commercial, that necessarily means that that term commercial should be narrowly viewed. So that list defines what is commercial? Yes. And the things that don't reside on that list, that are outside that list, are not commercial? And, and, I, and I think if you, re, if you take that view of the statutory construction and you layer onto that, the rule that statutes conferring eminent domain authority should be strictly construed. You get, you get there as well. So let, me ask you a, let me ask you a hypothetical. Suppose tomorrow the IDA says, you know what, we, we're, we're building this hospital. People who are coming to visit patients in the hospital and other people are going to need to eat. And so we want to condemn across the street, there's some junkyards and a couple of abandoned buildings. We want to condemn that and encourage restaurants to open up there. And that's going to be so people in the hospital and at the medical office building can have lunch while they're visiting people who are sick. Is that commercial purpose? I think, it, I think it's still part of the hospital. Uh, well, I, I also think it depends on the record that's developed before the IDA because here, th like I said, they're, they're stuck with their record. Well, they need to park and they need to eat. And it's the people who are coming to the hospital, whether they're patients or they're you know, relatives of patients or doctors or nurses or so on. Commercial, not commercial. It's, I don't it's think a it's McDonald's. I, I don't think it's commercial. Because, I mean, ret retail isn't included. Is it included. just because they happen to have gone to the medical facility? No, I think it's because of the overall project that the IDA um, is, is using the restaurant. domain for. Why isn't the restaurant commercial in that hypothetical? Because the, because the restaurant is, they're, they're taking it for an overall purpose. I think the issue is, and I think this is the slippery slope that happens in that case. Why isn't it co commercial? If, they're they're going to sell food. They're going to provide jobs. If, if they were just taking it for, for that commercial purpose and it wasn't tied into the hospital, it could potentially be commercial. I think the issue is... So if anybody from the hospital uses it, it's not commercial? No, I, I don't think I, I, would, I would. So it's just that they built the record differently. That is, they said, um, gee, we've noticed that now there are a lot of hungry people coming to this area who didn't used to come here before, and it would be great to condemn this property so they could eat. And they never mentioned that the reason the hungry people are now coming there where they didn't come before is because you've got this medical complex. It's okay. But the moment they say medical project, it's not commercial. That's sort of what I understand you to be saying. Well, I think that... The I don't think I'm saying, I think the difference is here is that they, they said that this, this property was, was critical, that they couldn't do their project without it. I think what, what you're saying is, hey, it would be a nice thing to have. So, uh, but the uh, difference, uh, I think, uh, is uh, that that's what makes it commercial or not commercial, the difference between nice thing to have and critical? No, I think it, it's whether the, the entire project takes it out of that definition of commercial. That they're, they're taking this property to be part of this overall project. They stated numerous times that the centerpiece of the project is the Six Ambulatory Surgery Center, and um, that that was going to be a joint venture requiring a certificate need from the Department of Health under Article 28 of um, Public Health Law, which is entitled hospitals, and that the overall project, of which this property is additional project land, would be used to facilitate the delivery of health care services to the residents of, of Oneida County. So, so, are, so view, are you, I'm sorry, in your view, uh, something is commercial or not dependent on the characteristics of whatever the overall project is? Yes, absolutely, because, you, because the IDA um, has to act within it, the statutory authority. And here, the overall project for which this property being taken from, through eminent domain is considered additional project land, and you have to look at whether or not they have the authority under GML 858 
to use eminent domain for that type of okay. process. So then is the, the analogy, kind of let me get that floor. Mm -hmm. So is the analogy that you're trying to draw that this parking lot, given the questions about the restaurant, is more akin to the, the dining room in a hospital as opposed to the restaurant across the street? Is that, I, I, you're saying I, it's, it's part of the hospital, somehow it works in this integral way with the hospital, yeah, so serves a particular yes. purpose that people may need to get food immediately in the hospital, not across the street and so forth. Yes, and I think in this example, it goes even further than it's a, it's a component. They said it's a critical component. They couldn't do the project without. That was the whole basis and the whole um, source of the application to the IDA for there is, there is uh, That was how they sold it. There is parking across the street or off street parking, yes? Well, one of the biggest issues for this overall hospital campus has been, has been parking. Um, and I think that's one of the interesting things here is that there were other acts of eminent domain that were undertaken by Oneida County, not the IDA, mm -hmm. where they, they took property um, for parking for the hospital. For whatever reason here, um, the IDA proceeded as the, the, the condemning authority. The problem is they proceeded in, in violation of their statutory authority under GML 858. So if I want to condemn property to build a new hospital facility and I need space in front of the hospital for cars to pull up and drop off patients or visitors, is that properly subject to 858 even though it's a pertinent to and necessary for the successful operation of the hospital? If the IDA is the, I, I think it, it depends on the identity of the condemning authority. If the condemning authority is the industrial development same, same agency, one. Same one. Then, then yes, I think it's part of the overall, but so you couldn't, the overall hospital. No, then, they, they couldn't. So, so if I then can't construct the hospital without that, um, your view is is anything related to a hospital or healthcare facility is outside the scope. Is there any alternate authority to condemn land um, for purposes of a hospital or healthcare facility? Well, I, I think in, in that case, the IDA would have to say, you can't come to us. We don't have the authority to exercise eminent domain over that. There's no other IDA. statutory source that you're aware of other than 858 that not, the- Not for an IDA. Defender. Now, another, entity with uh, condemning authority, such as, in this case, Oneida County, who, who did act as a, a, a condemnor for, for other properties in connection with the overall hospital project, or the municipality, the city of Utica, could. Um, but I think in the example because you give- their, that, their statutory authority does not have a similar- It's not similarly solution. limited. And I, and I think that that's the difference here, is that the IDA is a, a creature of statute, and they can only act in, in accordance with the authority granted to it by, by the legislature. And I think that's the difference, is that if you could find a condemning authority that has the authority, they can, they can do the restaurant, they can do um, the parking lot out front. Um, but what can't happen is that the IDA um, use its authority of eminent domain outside of its statutory authority. If there aren't any other questions, I'll, I'll rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to just be real brief on the core issue. Medical office building is not a HRF. Okay? It's, there's no beds, there's no patients, there's no residents. It can't be. A medical office building is a commercial facility. It's a rent-paying basis. I've given you the common basis under those appraisal of real estate. It's a rent-paying facility. That's the test for commercial. Under the statute, they did add certain categories, but it's as defined that it was one of the original categories, and they've added a few additional. If there was meant to be a prohibition for medical office building or ambulatory surgery center, daycare, proprietarily owned facilities, they would have enacted similar to 862, where there's a retail prohibition. If, it, if we disagreed with you and thought that it was a health care facility, do you lose? Or is there a reading of the statute under which you could still prevail? I think it's clearly commercial. I don't think under any stretch of the imagination that there is a basis. The only support they even, have is even those. Even if it is a health, 
even if we were to conclude, I understand you're taking a different view, yeah. but if we were to conclude that it was a health-related facility, if I have the terminology right, um, do you, is your view that you lose then, that that's what it turns on? I, I don't think that they're correct in that, and I don't think that there's a limitation on providing that. And the point of this, the real well, if you look at page nine of my reply brief, where there's an ABO opinion dealing with a day surgery center, that's the quintessential nature of a commercial facility. We go there, they're run by doctors, not hospitals. They're, they're proprietary, they pay rent. The ASC in this medical office building occupies only 19%. How is it possible that a medical office building, a rent-paying commercial building, with only 19% can be mythically converted, that the entirety of that structure can is I a just, hospital. There are no inpatients. Can I be clear on, uh, I know what you've said after day hours, during the daytime, who can park? Visitors to the if office building. If there's a parking building. lot on that lot, who could Correct. park there? It's, uh, my understanding under this record is it's for the medical office building. No one else can park there. No one, uh, no one else can park there, and that's how it was shown throughout the Not a the doctor EIS. in the hospital. No. Not a nurse in the hospital. It is not in appurtenance to the hospital. It's limited to the, the user, users of that medical office building. I would also say St. Francis shows you that these are routinely IDA transactions. I've been involved in this in 30 years. IDAs finance medical office buildings to provide tax benefits because we're trying to, as a community, incentivize the provision of health care at a lower cost for Medicaid and Medicare. Can the rest of the project run without the medical office building? It's running with, it's being built, but it, it will, can the rest of the project? Absolutely, it's a hospital. It's a separate it's and distinct project. as integral? that they're working? The only thing that conflated the two together was the necessity under Seeker to look at the entirety of the IHC. They are separate and distinct projects. There's separate ownership, separate financing, there's separate, um, they're separate ownership, separate leases. So in order for us to resolve this case, do we even have to talk about what the proposed use of that property is, whether or not it is health and I, I think that's a, a misnomer. The issue is it's a commercial parking lot. I've given you, you know, Greater Jamaica, the four appellate division decision cases. It's a commercial use. It can't be that it's a commercial use for the real property tax law, and then it morphs into a hospital use. It's a parking lot. Thank you, Council. Thank you.